Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Kislev is sponsored by Helena and David Brenner, the whole month of Kislev, Merit of Protection of Tov Yeruvim in Chai Hadassah, is proudly serving in Aza. Miriam and Avram Doit, in honor of 30 years of making Aliyah, and Mindy Barad, and thanks to Hashem for miracles, past, present, and future for Am Yisrael. Amen. Ken Yerotzon. This week is sponsored by, um, the, by Yosef and Lillian Aaron, um, in honor of Yosef's birthday and for the safe return of our soldiers and kidnapped, and by Michael Levy, in memory of the Yorzeit of his grandfather, Dovber Ben Zelig Levy. And uh, I want to give a big, also just a, a, an acknowledgement of all, all this chaver that's learning with us all over the world, that literally, uh, you know, this, this series of t- speaking about this process that we're in, and Alavai, everyone's feeling it, that you, everyone should continue to feel it and jump on it. And uh, make the learning as even more and more deep and more and more beautiful, Bezrat Hashem. I have pages for those that need for today. We have the Sefer Ran, Daf Tzadik Chet. Daf Tzadik Chet. Rav Shlomo, would you mind clarifying how you left the end of last... Oh, you think I remember? <laughs> I'm telling you. So you said that the panemias, we were all going around saying all the panemias is. You kept saying two There's more over here. And you said the panemias of Torah was Matzat and Brachot and Baba Kama. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that was, that was a, an example. It was an example. It was saying the following statement. I, thought of, I actually thought about what you're bringing up a lot uh, this week. You hear the question that Mat Esther had? Thank you. Very, very mm-hmm. good question. The Kodeshaiva was, and I spoke about it a little bit on Shabbos, about what does it mean when we say we learn Pnimius Satora? What does that mean? What falls under that category of learning Pnimius? It's a very, it's a very, you know, it's a very big statement. Pnimius Satora. It's a word that's used quite often. Pnimius Satora. What does this mean? The inner dimensions of the Torah. So, when I ended off by saying that it could also be a Mishnah in Baba Kama, or a Perak in uh, Treyasa, one of the, the, the books in the Tanakh, it's twofold. It means how do I learn Torah? It means how do I how do I understand my learning of Torah? The easy way to understand this question is basically to say, am I learning in order on a very uh, shitchi level, on a very uh, surface? One second, Ilana, do you need that? The on the surface, it's basically just saying, am I learning in order to get more information, or am I learning in order for it to be an active? Organism in my body, in my being, in my nefesh, in my neshama. That's a very, that's one way of explaining that, that question. But kamuvan, that the world of Pnimiya Satur, the Sfarim that come and activate those places inside of us, that would never be satisfied with just head knowledge, is obviously what the calling of, you know, of our door is much more, you know, speaking about. And there's access, you know, we have access to all of it. We have to learn how to access all these farm and to find the right teachers that are speaking like this and learning like that. But my point in saying that it was also a Mishnah and Baba Kama is that you think that a Mishnah and Baba Kama is like anything that's just a set of laws is just about, if it's God's Ratzon, it's coming from God's divine will, which is what every word of Torah is, then for sure what it has inside of it is secrets upon secrets, much more than just the surface. I also thought since we're studying Baba Kama right now in Daph Yomi, that maybe you were like thinking like, Saying the present, like where we're at in Torah, is where we're is the is what's in what's present. Beautiful. I I didn't you know I was racking my. You were thinking. Think you were thinking even thinking. even further than me. <laughs> <laughs> even further than me, <laughs> it. But thank you for bringing it up. Okay, so we're starting a new chapter today, and um, the obvious is that, Bemet, again, thank you so much for coming because. Learning now is like real Mesir Nefesh. It's also Pikuach Nefesh. It's both. It's Pikuach Nefesh. It's definitely saving our souls, and it's also it's giving, giving of our souls as well. To be able to throw our minds out of the updates that we're getting. Not ignoring the pain, obviously, but taking it and putting it inside to where we're in, to, 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 to this point in time. It just speaks volumes, and it says a lot, and... I'm just very, um, I'm inspired by, by all of you and humbled by all of you. And this talk about, like, I've never felt more, more shayach that like what we have to learn about right now is what we're davening for. And that's really, that, that's where I hope that we're all, we're all collectively 
learning. That, that's how we're collectively learning right now, more than ever. It should always be true, but dafka, dafka right now. Where, where, where are we in the learning? But where are we? Where are we right now? In the bigger picture of things, in order to align ourselves, to feel grounded, to feel rooted, to be connected to an anchor that can explain to us and explain to us on an amuna level, like Efa Nachnu, Ma Korepo, what are we holding on to? What are we holding on to right now? So Mishamayim, really, where we're, at, where we're up to right now is understanding these two, the, the process of going from the first shlav of Geula, which is Pekida, to the second shlav of Zechira, where Pekida may have been much more focused on something physically happening. And Zechira will then be the light that the Neshama knows to be true coming out and appearing without any shilas without any questions at all, with utmost clarity. Clarity, clarity, clarity. In the in-between stage is a very, very, very special place that we're in right now. That he's going to... We have this on the calendar. It's not right now on the calendar. But we're going to see where it is in the calendar and what the avodah of, the, of those days are. And that, of course, is Svirata Omer. What does it mean to, be in, to live in a state of Svirata Omer? That's basically the state that we're in right now. And he's going to develop this in a really beautiful way. We're going to cover a lot of text today, and, but it's because it's very straightforward, it's very clear. And uh, I think we're going to see why the Kabbalists, when it comes to Svirat Omer, that's when they go, they go all, you know, all out because of the different Midot and every, all the Tikkunim that happens in Svirat Omer. And that delicate transition between Pesach to Shavuot uh, Rav Drukman has a beautiful mamar, and this is really also what's happening right now with Am Yisrael li- coming back to Eretz Yisrael, leaving Mitzrayim and going to Har Sinai. The only difference is, and it's the greatest difference in the world, is that Har Sinai was still in Chutz Laaretz. The Har Sinai that we're longing for is in Yerushalayim, is Har Amoriah. It's another mountain. It's a different mountain. It's not Har Sinai. It's another mountain, which is very, very interesting. Mitzrayim, coming out of Mitzrayim, I think we could all say, yes, that's still very shayach and identifiable. But the location of the next mountain that we're heading towards is a different location. It's a different location. And it's not 49 days, it feels like 49 million years. But the context of the avodah, of the time between the two, is what we're going to be speaking about today. Shnei shlevei geula. Do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, sure. We didn't know what? No, 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 I'm saying Har Sinai was in Chutzla. It's where, when Mashiach comes, we're going to a different mountain, Har Amoriah, Yerushalayim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She, you know, she just showed us En Habay Shanit Lameda, that it's very good, that if you, if you, En Habay Shanit En Habay Shan Lameda, the shy one will never learn anything, so it's good. Like, these are very important things to always, always bring up. Something's not clear. We saw this a while ago, Yecheskel Hanavi, in that very, very beautiful description. I think it's in Perak Lamed Vav or in Perak Lamed Zayin, I don't remember right now. But in those Prakim and Yecheskel, there's a description of what it's going to be like. And the description we saw over here was, I'm going to take you and gather you, and I'm going to bring you onto your land. This is when Am Yisrael is already on its land. But there's a, even though they're physically on their land, what haven't they gone through? They haven't gone through the Tahara process. Not, not when it comes to death, tara. life, physical, tara. We haven't yet gone through a physical tara process. Then we're back, but we haven't become fully pure. And that's the difference between two different hashkafot olam, two different ways of viewing how to come back to Eretz Yisrael. There is a voice, it's not, it's not that loud anymore, where it's saying, you can only come back al admatchem, and Yecheskel only meant to come back al admatchem in what state? Total tara. Total kedusha, total like right, and 
that's not the way that we've been learning this at all. It's a Tafka explaining, and we're going to see this inside, how that's actually not how the, not just the prophets, but the Ramachal and Rav Kook for sure have developed this idea of what it, in what state am I supposed to be here? Like, what, what do I have to be like in order to, to call out to the Kodesh? Now, just to digress for a second, this is also brought up in the teachings of, of Rabbi Natan of Restov. We had this in the, in the men's year on Friday. Sometimes I think that in order to ask Hashem for something, I first have to be on a high and exalted place of Emunah, and of Torah, and of Tefillah, and only then I'm worthy of asking Hashem something. And also, don't bother Hashem with the little things. If Nassim says it's exactly the opposite. How do you make Hashem more of Hashem? Meaning, how do you make Hashem the king, more king? How do you make the king even bigger? How do you do that? So Reb Nassim says, if I ask Hashem for every single thing, no matter where I'm at in life, that means what I'm proclaiming is, is that I know that only Hashem can give me anything that I need. So when I ask Hashem Itbarach for anything, whether it's an... Uh, whether it's to find, honestly, before I go shopping, Hashem, please, may they have size six plus diapers. And may, may please, Hashem, may, 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 the, may, I, may the way that I... Whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, right? When I ask Hashem that all those little, anything, Reb Nassim says, I'm actually making Hashem more of a king in the world because I'm making a point in saying... It's you about the big things, it's you about the small things, it's you about anything in the world. But Reb Nassim says, and he adds, this is very important, and it's very important to today's shir as well, and bichlal the whole ma'alach of our learning. This is very important. Because it has to do with this concept that he just said right now. The voice that says, I can only call out to Hashem when I'm in a state of being holier, or better, or deeper, or wiser, is the other side. That's actually the sitra. That's not the holy side. Why? Why is that? Like, we can understand it on a very pshat level. Do you think, first of all, you think God's like a school teacher? Do you think Hashem is like... Uh, what's your concept of God? So Reb Nassim explains, I'm trying, to just, I'm trying to bring a very big concept into like something very small, is that Hashem is only interested in hearing from the place that you're actually at. Hashem is not interested in hearing from you, from a place that you're not at. And Hashem is not interested in you waiting to be at the place you want to be in order to be heard from you. So, ideally, of course, to come to Eretz HaKodesh, to fill the land with people that are completely conscious you know, Shamaim, Kedusha, Tahara, the Semcha, the understanding, you know, why I'm here, what I'm doing here. Of course, in an ideal world, in an Auschwitz-less world, that would be beautiful. That's not the world we're, that Hashem put us in. Therefore, wherever you're at, at whatever level you are on, that is, Amuna means that's all, that's the place Hashem is interested in hearing from me. Because that's where I am. That's why Breslov has like swept the, the young generation of the the mimamakim you know the ones that are they know it'll take a, a few gilgulim until they're actually where they want to be to speak to Hashem and they're just speaking where they're at right now they're saying wow you're telling me that's actually what Hashem's interested in not only is it holy not only is it kosher that's the place Hashem wants to hear me from and that's what we have to remember when we think about the typical Jew that finds himself in Eretz Yisrael today and that's found himself in Eretz Yisrael since the kibbutz galuyot has taken place. Bishlavze, I'm going to read, now I'm going to read it again, the third line. Bishlavze, Am Yisrael kvar nimtza be'etz Yisrael. Ach adayin lo ba b'mayim chayim b'vchinat ta'arat ha'mikve. Ve'lo b'vrit ha'kodesh b'vchinat edvekut ba'ashem. Zot tkufa murkevet. It's a very complicated period in time. Shemitzad echad ha'guf hechel le'yigael. Tell us about it, about being, how, how, it's, so, how it's so complicated. Such a complicated period. On the one hand, the body has begun to be redeemed. Shemitzad echad aguf hechel lehigael. Ach mitzad sheni, ruach atuma adayin lo sara. The body has not, is not in the ghetto anymore. I don't have a, a kapo, I don't have, I don't have 
an Egyptian with a whip over me, maybe now. But on the, so on the body is, is experiencing a certain, it's hard to say these words right now because obviously we still have this tuma in the land of, 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 of Pachad. But the body is, is a redeemed, much more of a redeemed body than it was when it was in Galut, when it was in exile. But on the other hand, the spirit of Tuma has not really left, has not been removed from within the liberated body. Do you understand? The Ruach of Tuma, this is hard to say because we want to believe no one's Tameh and the Ruach of Tuma, no, when you come to Eretz Yisrael, that's it, it's all clear, you're fine, it's all, all your problems are fixed and we've already spent about eight years kind of like breaking down that, that statement and trying to understand what the Avodah of today is. Not just that, is that after you're actually physically in the land, what may occur? Bilbul ruchani, spiritual confusion, ve'ovdan derech, and losing a derech. Incredible. Like, mamash, what we've seen. And I have a very, very close friend of mine. This is a beautiful person. Big neshama. I've played music with him for many years. I met him when I was still in, I met him in, in L.A. And <clears throat> he, he's, I, I feel so close to this person, I, I can't express in words. And Al Pnei Shetach, I don't think there's anything that we do that's reminiscent of each other at all, in terms of life practicing at all. He went to go play for some people on f- Friday at 12 o'clock. He lives up, he lives up north somewhere. And he, he texted me before, and he, he, he's, the day before he said, you know, I'm coming, coming to your area, I'm coming to Yerushalayim. Can I come and play some nigunim with you, and for you and your wife and your kids uh, on a Friday? Do a little at Kabbalah Shabbat. And he did. And he even forced, he, like, he forced us all to sit around in the living room. He even forced my Avina to like, okay, he, he tried one song, he's like, okay, that was good, and now you're really gonna be there, be present, and he did, and he started playing the Alter Rebbe's Avino Malkeino. This person, I, I, I promise you, he's never learned the word of Alter Rebbe. And he, it, 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 this is not where he's holding, and a lot of the, a lot of the Ruach that, that he t- dabbles in is filled with Tumah stuff. I could talk to him about this also. But this is a person that Hashem wanted me to be with in Eretz Yisrael at this time in life. And that's in our face. And it's in our heart. And it's so beautiful, but it also shows us what <coughs> is still left to be done. Mm-hmm. And how to, and, and the, the question of how, is that, that's the shayla that we're hopefully addressing. It, might have been, it may have been the most holiest few moments that, that we've had together, maybe in the house, of just like, quiet, the kids sitting around, listening to, you know, a few, you know, I, I took out the guitar, I played with him a little bit, but it was really him. Bilbul ruchani ve'ovdan derech. Now, I'm not saying right now this is the derech, but the way he's holding is where we should be doing at all. But it's a, it's, it's description of what, of the process of geula. Okay? Aleinu le'avin et atkufa azot, we have to understand this period, ki hi nogat mamash lechayeinu. Because it's really speaking to our life. This is our, what, our, what our lives are all about. Look, you always got to go to the root. Now I'm never to look at things on the surface. Look at root work. That's what we're busy doing here. What's the root of the period that we're all in right now? Sfirata Omer. Leaving Mitzrayim not yet where we're supposed to be by receiving the Torah. That's the root, mifchinat shorshit, it's very important. Hitbonenut mifchinat shorshit. Deep introspection on a root level to understand what, the, what this door is, where we're finding ourselves, we have to go back to that period of time. If I ask you like, to imagine, what did people think about each other during Svirat Omer? What do you... What do you think people, when people looked at each other, what they thought about each other? If you really stop for a second and, and what do you think people thought about each other? Before we got the Torah, Sviyat Omer, Am Yisrael, what do you think people thought about each other? 
What do you think? Come on. Ena by Shaniot Lamidot, huh? Right there for those for those seven weeks. Like what what what? What do you think people thought about each other? I saw you at Sinai. Not yet. No. No. They didn't. Maybe that's after Har Sinai. But think for a second. We have this image of we're all harvesting so beautifully in the first of all that Korban Omer is not that's something that only happened later on. Mm-hmm. What was happening during that period of time? Uh, you, for sure. Well, that's about that's about the self. But what about and, and, and their friend? Or or a fool, right? I'm worthy. How did he get out of there, Nachon? Or the trauma? Sorry. Right, right, Nachon. Right, that could be also. And the trauma surrounding that, like, and what they had just been experiencing. For sure. Survivor guilt. Survivor guilt, big time. Also, maybe, I I saw you a second before Makas Bechoros. I, I saw what you were doing. <laughs> the fact that you're out here is beyond me, but let's not kid ourselves. I know, like, I know you. I, I know who you are. Like, I, I know what you were doing, you know. Not yet. I'm talking about before, yeah. right, till. Yeah. They, they got there only, you're getting much closer to like Rosh Chodesh Sivan, uh, the end of Sriyat Omer, after a massive, massive Avodata Nefesh workshop was in place. Massive. The, the most massive Avodata Nefesh workshop and the people was taking place for Kimat seven weeks. That workshop is this, these, 75, 100 years that we're in right now. He's going to explain this. Kvishi iskarnu. On the bottom of Tzarek Chet, Kvishi iskarnu. Et inyan shnei shlavei ha-geula, anu yicholim limtso gam ba-geula ha-rishonu shel Am Yisrael. These two stages of redemption, we could also find bichlal in the first redemption of Am Yisrael, shehi ha-shoresh l'chol ha-geulot ha-achirot, which is the root of all future redemptions. Am Yisrael yatsa ma-mitzrayim begufo, we physically came out of Egypt, and only then we came to, this, to the footsteps, to the, to the, we came to Har Sinai to receive the Torah. So there's a release from the burden and the yoke that the Egyptians put upon us. So there's a but the appearance of holiness coming on us, literally pouring itself over us, that's, that took place at Har Sinai, at Matan Torah. Between these two levels, between these two moments in time, are the days of the Omer, and they express a long period of purification and preparation for it towards Matan Torah. So he says here that the shlav where the physical geula took place. Now you think, it's crazy, what do you mean? Oh, I witnessed all those miracles and I still didn't have da'at Hashem? that I know that Hashem is running the whole show and it's clear to me? Yes. We experience all those miracles, but yet still, this da'at of Hashem, deep down inside, that was clear to me that He's running the show and nothing else, still didn't appear. Only later on. Eilu hayamim sheben shvirat ola goyim ve'ad hasarat ruach hatuma al yedei atvila b'mikveh b'mamad ar sinai. These are the days, be- like, mamish, the days in between. It's such an in between status that we're in. Until this Ruach Atoma is completely removed and we'll all be immersing in the mikvah, which is Matan Torah, which is Kabbalah Torah, which is Har Sinai. Nachen, Nocha Lavin Yoter La Omek et Atalichaze, Vet Amatsava Maavar Ben Ashlavim, Le Oreit Boninut, Betalich Yitziat Mitzrayim Bichlal. So Rav Sasson is saying, you want to understand 
what you're experiencing today, what I'm experiencing today, what's happening in the world today, you have to look at the ma'avar, the ma'avar, the transition. The transition, thank you, between the two stages of leaving Mitzrayim, because on a certain level, a chunk of Am Yisrael has been leaving the Mitzrayim, the resemblance of being under a Shiabud, being under the oppression of someone else. So physically, I'm out. And then addressing the very, very, very clear, clear notion that that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. There was a statement people would say sometimes when they would make Aliyah, that like the first thing they did is that uh, they stopped wearing suits on Shabbos. That was their expression of making Aliyah. Like people that wear, wear suits all day long in America. Come to here, because here you don't have to. Or, all, all different types of things of, uh, of like uh, the, the Simcha that people would go, you know, come here and then go to shul at 8.30 and be home at 10.15. In America, that you know, that, that never happened, right? And that, and that, that saying, ah, oh, that's the, that that that's you know, th- this is it. This is this is part of the. Now that's. Now it doesn't mean that if you wear a suit and if you're in shul till twelve, that that you made it either, but it's understanding what the purpose of why you come here and what avoda you're supposed to be doing now that you've left uh, Mitzrayim to understand what that is, to know what that is. And he's saying, if we look at the way we left Mitzrayim and we focus on what we were busy during Svirat HaOmer, perhaps we could be much more aligned with what we're supposed to be doing now, what we're supposed to be doing today. Wouldn't you love to know what you're supposed to be doing today? <laughs> Even for 10 minutes a day, if you knew, for 10 minutes a day, I'm going to know what I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing today. What a, what a beautiful what a beautiful feeling that would be. Huh? Amen. Amen. So let's look a little bit into the days of Svirat HaOmer. Okay, this is, even though on a, on a timeline, obviously the days of Svirat HaOmer are not that long, but the, there's so much packed in each and every single day. Think about it. They said that um, the Nei Yisrael is on the 49th level of Tumrat. Right. So they left, and it took 49 days. So it's like every day you needed to up one level, and that's why it took so long. The, meaning that then, yeah. even though it's not so long, 49, right, 49 days. Is, no, but they didn't go yeshar because right. the time, like every day seemed to be uh, a mikvah for one level of Before Shabbat. the next level. Nachon. Nachon. Okay, so let's go, let's go deeper now. Nidbonen me'at b'mahut yimei sfirat ha'omen. Let's understand. Even though I know it's weird, we're right now in Kislev, Hanukkah's around the corner and there's a war and, and our hearts are completely showered and broken, but the koyach of the Torah can pull us Amash, the Koach of the Torah can pull us to what we need to learn from every single, every single thing. You have to realize that right now it's Kislev. We could be learning Torahs right now about Shemitah, which is only in six years, right? You know, the Koach of the Torah is infinite. It's not just bound to, oh, we only learn this then, you know? When we speak about this then, it's, it's not like that. But can you clarify how we got here? Like, I mean, how did, how did we get to Spirit her almost from, the, from all the Geula that we've been talking about? Like, Good, good question. Because he says that the, any future geula, specifically the geula of Mashiach, it's all rooted in the first geula. Because there's a pasuk mm. that says, "Ki mm. meaning that the 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 exodus from Egypt is the platform upon which any person being redeemed, whether it's a geula pratit, an uh, individual geula, or geula klalit, is all learned from. The first time that happened to Am Yisrael as a people. <coughs> Great question. Nitbonen me'at b'mahut yimei svirat ha'omer. Mevoa b'svarim shematrat yamim elu hayta ha'achana likrat matan Torah. So the svarim tell us that these days of, of svirat ha'omer were a preparation towards receiving the Torah. Ki lo ayu Yisrael reuim lekabel et ha'torah miyad b'tzetam b'mitzrayim, machmat ha'shiabud ha'aroch she'ergil otam l'avdut mitzrayim. והוצרחו לרפא את נפשם משברי הגלות עד שיעמדו במעמד של חילות גמורה, גם בגופם וגם בנפשם. The famous statement, you could take the yid out of gullus, but you can't take gullus out of the yid. Ramash, right? So what he's saying over here is that you, to, to just go, if they would have gone to Har Sinai, first of all, Hashem would not have appeared on Har Sinai to a people that couldn't really accept what he wanted to give them. How and what state were Am Yisrael 
in order to receive what Hashem wanted to give them after 49 days, and he uses a very specific term here. Did you see what he said? What, what matzav? What ma'amad? Cherut gemora. Cherut gemora. What's cherut gemora? Physical and mental, complete physical and mental freedom. Comple- and so the day after leaving Mitzrayim, or the day after Kriyas Yamsuf, it wouldn't, uh, you know, the lawyers, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been that. If you to receive Hashem's word, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Cherut gemura, gam begufam, gam benafsham. Bezek adam shayam shuabat tachat yad kasha. It is like a person that was very much, you know, meshuabad. Uh, he was enslaved harshly. You have to remove this the slavery that you've you've become so accustomed to. To heal its wounds and to now accustom the person to live a new reality. And what's that new reality of living? I had a friend one time that called me. Right before he was, uh, he, saw, he he didn't have a good shirut. Uh, he didn't have a good service in the army. He was in the air force, and, and this was a long time ago. And he, he said he has to come talk to me. Said, well, what's going on? He's like, I'm petrified. So what's up? He's like, I'm I'm about to uh, I'm about to get out next week. I'm like, what are you petrified? You've been complaining for almost three years. He's like, mm-hmm. he's like, I know, but every single day I knew what I was going to do, <laughs> and I had someone telling me. So every, every day I knew what I was going to do, and I'm so petrified of no one telling me what to do, even though I'll be done with this matzav that I've been in. And that is a very, very telling statement. It's a very, that's a very powerful statement. So it's a very, very powerful statement. As much as we hate shiabud, we actually get accustomed to it. You know, enslavement, we get accustomed to it, and we kind of are okay with someone telling me every single day what I have to do, what to do, because freedom is petrifying. Freedom is petrifying. You want to tell me that I'm free? Not to do whatever I want. Free to serve Hashem in the way that I know that I want to? It's petrifying. Anyone that's ever left any misgeret, is it misgeret? A frame, like a framework, any type of, whatever it is, that moment that they then say, they didn't do anything wrong. Laifech. <laughs> They've been released, now they're in a great place, and now you're saying, here, here's the world. So that, so that sort of explains, it, like, I'm asking, if that's why it took 40 years to go into Eretz Israel, because they were afraid of the freedom, and they needed that extra time to, to, to purify themselves. They weren't ready then. So it's two shlavim. One is, they were, in order to first purify themselves to receive Hashem's word on Sinai was one shlav, mm-hmm. and then 40 years afterwards, yeah. It's like a tochnit elokit from the beginning, maybe? Not maybe. Everything's a tochnit elokit from the beginning. <laughs> but, of course. Betach. You know, the meraglim resemble exactly the opposite of this. The meraglim resemble exactly the opposite of chirut. Because they were so petrified from realizing there's a new mitziyut, there's a new reality. So then when it, what happens to you when you, realize, when you get scared of like the unknown? You notice fear. You, you inj- fear comes inside you, and that's what dictates to you the way that you observe your life and, and act. And that's what the Meraglim were like, well, listen, we, had, we have this godly, we have this Ma'alach Eloki working for us right now. It's working for us right now after what we experienced in Mitzrayim. Now we're working here. But Hashem Yisbarach is always saying, it's always about forward. It's never staying on the same Midah. So whatever you think is a godly plan today, why, why are you saying that has to be the godly plan, plan tomorrow? What freaked out the Miraglim was that they realized the way that they're going to have to relate to God is going to be different when they come to Eretz Yisrael. It's not going to be manna falling down from heaven, and their clothes aren't just going to get washed with the Ananea Kavod and grow with them, Bechulei. It's a different set of rules. It, it works differently. It works differently. Obviously, every sentence we're saying today, I'm biting my tongue about speaking about anybody or anything. You know, but you understand, right? It just works differently. And, and malasot. It's a different mahalach. It's a different. It's a different way of. It, it's it's a set of rules that have to prepare you to be in a state of what Hashem wants you to be. Cherut 
Gemura. You know, there's a. Have you heard of Moshe Feigman? Of course you have, right? Remember, he had a party. He had a, a political party called Zehut. He wrote a book. It was like a bestseller after a very short time. It's a very interesting book. A very, very interesting book because it's really, it's not a political platform. Even though he does have there, he offers what, what he, back then they thought he was going to be the surprise, get eight mandatim. At the end, he didn't even pass a chuzah chasima. It was like one of the greatest surprises in the, la- in the last, I don't know, 81 elections, which have happened in the last few years. <laughs> but what he has there also is a very interesting matzav, Yiddishkeit. He has a very, it, it's a philosophy about you. And, and he has this big picture there. It says, Yahadut Shave Chirut. Not Chirut to do whatever you want, but free to choose to be an Eved Hashem in any, you know, at, like, like, like you know you want. No one's standing over us anymore. The Yehudi of the Galut, the Yehudi of Mitzrayim, the Yehudi of Europe, Cherut was not part, was not part of the lexicon. It wasn't part of what they were working with. And the point, at a Shabbos meal with someone that was really drilling this point over and over and over again, is that you know the the point here is not to be Israeli or American Jew or it's to be a Jew that's Cherut that's just Cherut, a Jew without symptoms of galut. Even though we had, we had a lot of beautiful things that we took with us from from the galut, but wherever we f- we could detect, like when is it when is it starting to play with our minds? When is it starting to dictate to us how we live here and how we treat enemies and the chule? Call it out, stop it there, and ask yourself: Are you living in a state of cherut gemura? Because obviously, if I go around the room right now and I ask each of you, do you believe that the current leadership of Am Yisrael is living in a state of cherut gemura? We'd have we'd have a, a lot of interesting answers and a lot of painful answers as well. The Avodah is not for us to decide what's good for other people. I have to become a Yehudi, that's a Yehudi cheruti, a, a, a Yehudi that, that's living in this state. It's a, it's a purification process. But we're going to understand what that means to become... We say this in Marev, Amaviba, Vayotzeit Amo Yisrael mitocham lecherut olam. That, that's the Lashon we say in Davening, that the reason why Hashem took us out of Egypt wasn't that momentary sparks of feeling good about myself? Cherut olam. I love that. I love that statement. I love that that, that tefillah. Cherut olam, like worldly freedom. But chofesh is more like freedom. Cherut means something else. The Gemara, the Major says, Al tikri charut ela cherut, charut ela luchot, meaning that the words of God are carved into me in such a way that I could never ever be oppressed by anyone's opinions or thoughts ever. A free person. Free from what anyone... Why? Because I have Hashem's words. Charut al luchot al kat maluach libacha on the luach of my heart, right? That the word of Hashem is so engraved into me that no foreign culture, no foreign... no 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 ideology that's not coming from Dvar Hashem can ever have any mishabedoti. It can't enslave me at all. Because I'm completely, completely living in it. I'm complete. I'm, it's completely engraved in me. I'm operating from a completely different place. Now, this, t- in order to reach this shlav we're talking about, this is a very long healing process. It's very long. It's a lot. You want to say something? It's like going from victim to responsibility. That process it could take it could take century. Meaning, it's that's a that gap is. I mean. That's a huge distance. That, 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 that distance is very, very, very long. Batach, generations and generations and generations. This is not a, this is not a simple thing. It, that's why anyone that looks at it as just like a, a, a geographical relocation mm-hmm. may as well move to, to, to New Zealand. <laughs> Uganda. <laughs> So let's go back inside. Bottom of Tzadik Tet. And I know there's, a, there's, a, there's this, right? It's this morning at 10 o'clock? Yes. So I want to make sure we stop on time. Matan Torah hu kesher advekut benenu ben HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Kritat Brit, bifchinat chatuna. Har Sinai is the wedding. It's the marriage. Ach kedei liot reuyim lemamad zeh. But to be worthy and ready to stand under the chuppah. 
צריכים אנו להיות מרוכזים בהבראת עצמנו. We, we, we have to have, הבראת עצמנו means like self well, wellness. What's that? I'm learning so much English in these same kind of lessons. להסיר מאיתנו כל מה שמשעבד את רוחנו, to remove, to remove from us anything that enslaves our spirit, שעומד כחוצץ בינינו ובין הברית עם השם אלוקינו. בעבודת הנפש we're speaking about is having enough guts to detect and call out anything, anything that I can realize is cutting me away from the real me. To be able, and even if it's things that like, I thought were once upon a time good for me, and holy for me, and special for me, but at a certain shlav in life, I have to say, you know, this thing is just, it's a mechitza. It, it doesn't allow me anymore to be with the, with the, with the me that I know is waiting behind this mechitza. <clears throat> Sometimes, we've spoken about this before, It's relationships. You know, it's certain relationships that were really good for me at a certain point and they really helped me mm-hmm. at a certain point. Even teachers, at a certain point, it, it, it helped me get to a certain shlav. But now this next shlav that I feel that I'm not connected to my ruach, could it be that it's a certain relationship or a certain ruach that's coming from someone else that's preventing me from literally being... with what my spirit is, where my spirit is at and calling out to me to be there. Lefichach, next page. Lo amadnu nochach pnei Hashem b'chol yitziyat Mitzrayim ad ma'amad matan Torah. What are these words from nochach pnei Hashem? Where do we have this? Shifchi kamayim libech nochach pnei Hashem. Who says this? Yermiyahu Navi. It's from Eicha. Shifchi kamayim libech nochach pnei Hashem. Pour out your heart before Hashem. No, well, not before Hashem. Nochach p'nei Hashem. That you are living in a state of... What does nochach mean? It's living a life of ata. That you're talking to Hashem on the level of ata. Nochach p'nei Hashem. I remember one time when we first came into the shul, it was Bar Mitzvah, and tons of chavra that, that from a lot of different places in Chutzlar is here, we're all here. And it was, it was like, it was so loud in Shachas. Now, no one felt they were doing anything wrong. It's just, it's just what they're used to. So I got up before Kriya Sator. I said, listen, we're soon we're going to hear the Bar Mitzvah boy. He's going to lay in, and I know he prepared so beautifully because I heard him. He came, I heard him already. I said, in order for, for him to be able to do what he needs to do, we all need to right now ask ourselves, am I in a place where I'm nochach p'nei Hashem or not? Right? Mm-hmm. Tul Chavra got so insulted. I wasn't talking to anyone uh, uh, directly. And I spoke to them afterwards. I said, this is the way to welcome people into your shul, talking about, like, they have to be Nochach Pnei Hashem, I said. Whatever. It was a very interesting conversation. What Rav Sasson is saying, to be able to be, to, to be in a place of Nochach Pnei Hashem. You know, Zalman spoke about this all the time. This, this kind, and, and Ingber speaks about this all the time. Nochach Pnei Hashem, that I could, that I could feel, that I could feel that I am Nochach Pnei Hashem, not from a guy with the Kowei, not Chalila, not an audience, look at me, I'm Nochach Pnei Hashem. But that I realize that this is an answer to my Neshama that wants to be in a place of Nochach Pnei Hashem. He says, until Matan Torah, there was no way for us to be in that place. Galut, even though we were physically out of there, Galut was still the big chunk of us. A right? big, big chunk of us. I wasn't able to do Nochach Pnei Hashem. Until Matan Torah didn't happen, Bo ba'elenu adibura eloki. Then when Hashem says, you know, when Hashem started to speak, it's because Hashem saw we were ready. If not, He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have spoken. Hayamim shekodem lachen, but the days preceding that, Nochach Pnei Hashem experience of Matan Torah, We had to stand on our feet. We had to get strong. We had to be healed. You know, by us, in our modern time, when have we had the time to, to be healed? Since we came back to Eretz Yisrael. Have we had that time? People always wonder, how come you Israelis are so... They were thinking, a few years after the gas chambers, we're here fighting a war against all these nations... A few years later, another war, in between little war. 
we haven't had the luxury. We've spoken about this. There hasn't been this, this like, state of, well, now you're all going to Kramim, Ami said. Like, you're all, oh, now everyone here, now the time of healing is taking place. As a healing. As a healing. It hasn't happened. It hasn't been the, there hasn't been the luxury of it. The fact that we could even speak, like, like, in these terms, even right now today, you have to realize it's insanity. Mamash, crazy. Me'ala teva. So he's a mashal ben melech, like a parable to the son to a prince. Shaya shavui bevet asra. Uva melech upadao misham biat chazaka. His father comes and he pulls him out of jail. Af shirotel atet lo koach rav ba'anagat ha'mamlacha. And what does a prince do? He usually continues what his father did, as the king did. And that is to be, to govern, to be a sub, right? To mamlich, to be a melech. But he waits. And he says, now you need some time for yourself. To heal, to get strength. Mamish, wellness. That word that today is becoming so big in the world. Wellness. To clean your pain. And then a person can come to do what they are supposed to be doing in this world. Now, because we have to end now, but this makes this learning even that more difficult. Why? Because Lemaisa, if I stop here and I say, so what is he telling me about today? Are we ready to be, are we ready for Malchut? So far, on the way that he has described it right now, are we ready to be B'nai Malachim? Are we ready to govern the way we're supposed to, we know we could govern, we should be governing? Seems, based on this, I'll pee, the way that he's developing this, is that we're not, because we haven't had an ounce of Sheket Pnimi in order to have like, Al Mei Menuchot Ina Aleni, Mei Menuchot, right? But I remember you remind you that on the other hand, Hashem can do anything. It could be that we can get to that place of Mei mm-hmm. by by Mincha. Mm-hmm. Hashem can do anything. Mm-hmm. We could wipe out all this evil in one... If, and, and, and like Josh Adler is pushing now a campaign, Nez Galui, that's what everyone has to be davening for, revealed miracles, 250 hostages coming out on the shoulders of Chayalim smiling with guitars. Mm-hmm. What do I know? If Hashem's Hashem, Hashem can do anything, right? That means that the period of Havra'a of this like wellness, mm. it could be that we'll we'll be privileged to have this. I don't know how long it'll be, how long it'll be it'll be needed, but Hashem can do anything. What I have to do is take advantage of every single moment of my life, of right now calling out where the galut is still the way that I think and live. Calling it out. Real deep tikkun anaf. This is all soul work. This is, this is not head work. Maybe the, it begins with the head work of calling something out, but then it comes really, really inside of me. And again, calling out galut mentality when, that, are, that is clear is not such a hard avoda. If I'm still um, glued to any, anything that comes from American culture, that's very easy to detect as like a galut mentality. That's not the stuff I'm talking about. Those, those are clear things. It's more the way that, I've, that I function, the way that I think about Hashem, the way that I learn Torah, the way that I teach Torah, the way that I understand Var Hashem, has Galut gone into there, that is the real hard stuff. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that, that's, that's where it really is the game changers. You understand? The outside stuff is easy to detect. as like, ah, this is Galut, look, no mind. People mean so well. Like I got, a, I woke up this morning and, and, and I had a message from someone. And he says, "Mamash, they mean so well." Someone said, "You know, I'm not going to say the town where they're from." He said, "Lakers are coming to so and so on November 25th. I can get you floor seats if you want to come for a breather." <laughs> the person means very, very. Bemeti means very, very well. Th- th- those are not the kind of things of galut that I'm speaking about, or that he, I think he's going to bring up in here. It's where did it appear in, sh- in our shuls? Where did it appear in our schools? Without blame, without blaming and saying something's wrong, someone did something wrong. This is a natural evolution of a people. These things are stuff we're just not aware of. What's amazing, though, is that when you go into the world of Mesirut Nefesh, like we're all on the shoulders of our holy chayalim that should be protected, they pull us out of those places of galut like this. It's crazy. 
the soldiers, mamash, der mesirut nefesh, kind of mamash, schleps us out of any pettiness that we may have been in. But that, but so, they, so we see we're bent, you know, we're on their shoulders, but, but they're, they got enough things that they're carrying, you know. Now it's on us to continue that malach of getting out of ourselves, detecting where, what this even means. Where do I see, a, when I say galut mentality means a non chirut way of thinking and living, and there's many more examples that we're going to be learning about how to detect this avodah, because it's very, this is the, this is the avodah nefesh we're speaking about. And alavai kacha, this shlav between, like the ma'avar between pekida and zechira, uh, will just happen so much faster and in such an impactful way, much more than what we could have ever, ever imagined. And it should be in the schut of the tzaddikim that are most of their nefesh every single day, and that Hashem should be shmat filateinu. And we'll continue to learn this b'zrat Hashem next Sunday.